Well, good, good morning. Welcome to our resurrection service. Amen. Amen. As I think back when we were trying to buy the building in 1998, and we were really praying for getting the building in time so we could do Easter. Mm -hmm. But uh, those of you that were there, well, no, that it didn't happen yeah, until yeah. June. Yeah. But anyway, Amen. but I was planning, I was all excited, wanted a sunrise service and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, I had a lot of ambitions. Mm -hmm. But now that we've walked with the Lord all these years, one day we might get to a sunrise service, but we, we haven't got to that yet. It takes a lot of dedication and commitment. Amen. Amen. Not that I'm not dedicated or committed, but I'm just saying the Lord hadn't told me to get up at daybreak and do a service yet. And if he did, I'd have to pray again. Is that you, Lord? <laughs> well, Lord, we thank you for this morning. I thank you for your spirit going before us. We pray for those that are still need a prayer this morning. Lord. I pray for uh, Jennifer that you continue to touch her as she recovers, Lord. And I pray that you just give her peace and let her know that there's a reason for everything that we go through, Lord. And that you yet have us, regardless Amen. of our trials and tribulations. We pray for those that need a touch in their health, those that need a touch in their finances, and those that need a touch that are lonely and they need a mate, Lord. You know where everybody is on this Resurrection Sunday. We pray Amen. for Deacon Beach that he get well. Amen. Lord, and just touch him and uh, just and Mother and all yeah. those that have went through this time of testing, Lord. And we thank you for those of us that you've uh, raised back up. Amen. And I thank you for your faithfulness, Lord, that this was not a sickness unto death. Amen. And we pray for those that are dealing with all the tragedies around the world, and yes. those in Baltimore and those in other places that have lost loved ones and those in Kiev and just uh, the Gaza and there's just so many places where men want to do evil to men. Mm -hmm. And Father, we pray for the innocents that get caught up and these other things. And Lord, we pray against this spirit of hatred and division that has come yes. upon our nation. Yes. And we pray that people, that the, the blinders be lifted off their eyes yes. and they realize this is nothing but Satan trying yes. to divide us and make America hate again. And Lord, we, we can't have that. We went through that in another generation, but we are better than that. And we've got yes. past that. And we pray that people will look to Christ, the Christ of the Bible that says, love others as you love yourself. Yes. And the Christ of the Bible that says, he that will be uh, that wants to be in charge needs to be the servant of everybody else. Amen. And let us learn the humility that Christ showed. Amen. And we do thank you for this Resurrection Sunday, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's just the proof. As you yes. got up, mm -hmm. we will get up. Amen. And we thank amen. you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So this message is called, Let's Talk About Getting Up. All right. Let's Talk About Getting Up. You know, when we think about getting up, the older you get, that phrase can mean so much more. <laughs> so when you first got up, probably did your first walk, somebody was probably there cheering you on and congratulating you, and, <laughs> and you made your stumble your first couple steps, and they may have took a picture of it, or they may have celebrated with you, they clapped their hands, you clapped yeah. your hands, everybody yeah. celebrated, yeah. you got up. Yeah. Yeah. And then some kind of surprise you. They just get up when you're not looking. They just start, they grab a coffee table or whatever and start walking. And you may miss it. Mm -hmm. But as you get older, getting up can mean a lot more different things. It's now, as the older I get, getting up means I don't get up quickly. <laughs> if I get up quickly, I might get lightheaded. If I get up quickly, I might get a flutter. So now I got to get up with the pace. Amen. You don't get overexcited at my age. <laughs> you know, when you get up, you take your time. And now I'm just, we've been in our home over 20 years now, and I was just thinking the other day as I was going down the steps a lot slower than I used to. I used to take them steps two or three at a time. And now sometimes I may double step the same step. <laughs> but I'm just saying, as you, yeah. get, as you get older, you, know, yeah. 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 you got to pace yourself. Yeah. Amen. But, you know, just getting up. But Jesus, when he was laid down, the Holy Spirit got him up. Amen. And even today, we depend on the Spirit, the Spirit to keep us through everything we go through. Amen. Because if it had not been for the Spirit on my side, yeah. where would I be? Right. You know, death is around every corner. Yeah. You know, the person next to you can just lose control, have an aneurysm and drop That's dead right. and run yeah. into you. You never know yes. what happened. Yes. Uh, stray bullets. There's mm -hmm. all kind of things happening in our society that can take you out. But uh, I was looking at this clip on Sinbad the other day, and he had a massive stroke that only like 30 percent of the people survive. Mm. 
And wow. he was talking, he had to learn to talk and walk and go through all these things again. But he was said that uh, he had purpose in his heart that he would perform again and he would yes. walk across the stage. And as he's progressing, he's thanking all the people that sent him support and prayed for him. Amen. And, you know, being a pastor's son, after all he went through, he, he realized he had to get back to his roots. Amen. Start Amen. praying and depending yes. on God again. Yes. Yes. So I just want to tell you this morning, death no longer has a sting. Amen. Yes. yes. Lord. Death no longer has a sting. Yes. And the five major milestones of the New Testament narrative of the life of Jesus are his baptism, his transfiguration, his crucifixion, his resurrection, mm -hmm. and his ascension. So the first was his baptism, and then his transfiguration. You know, John baptized him at the start of his mm -hmm. ministry. Then is his transfiguration, that he was able to talk with Moses and Elijah, mm -hmm. with his disciples witnessing it on the mountain. Yes. That, that showed them the glory of who he was and what he came to do. And then his crucifixion. He that was sinless became the lamb that was sacrificed for us all. Even now, the Jews still sacrifice lambs. They still go through the whole thing. They're still waiting for the coming of the Messiah. Mm. And they kind of miss that part. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then his resurrection. Mm -hmm. When he got up. Yes. Man, that yeah. just changed mm -hmm. history forever. Mm -hmm. Like I said, people claim they don't believe in Jesus. They don't believe in God. Mm -hmm. But every time you write a check and you write 2024, or you write a document that says 2024, that date is reached because of him. Amen. You know, that's when they started marking out dates. Mm -hmm. So whether you believe it or not, he did come and he did live. And then Amen. some people want to, I was watching this movie last night where they were talking about how all three of the traditions honor him. Mm -hmm. Muslims do, the Christians do, and the Jews do. You know, they still call him a prophet in the other two. Mm -hmm. But in ours, we call him Lord and Savior. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you just think about it. It's just, that's an awesome thing to believe in. But it's important to Christians to believe in the resurrection because it shows that Jesus defeated death. Mm -hmm. And it's proof of his of life after death. Amen. And the more loved ones we bury and the more people we lose, we realize as our term is coming up, mm -hmm. that we hold on to that promise. Yes. That we know we've never really lost anyone. Right. That That's you know, right. we will see them again. Yeah. Yeah. And then it, it also proves his omnipotence. Mm -hmm. yes, Lord. He's very all-powerful yes. guy. Yes, yes, yes. Jesus told him, uh, I can lay my life down and pick it up again. Wow. Yes. Yes. You know, I've Hallelujah. seen great magicians and all this other stuff. And <laughs> they Woo. walked through the China Wall and they did all this other stuff, but they, none of them gave up the ghost and was proved dead and got back up. Yes. And then his omnibenevolence, that his great love, mm -hmm. his benevolence, is all present, all the time, mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. His omnibenevolence. Omnipotence, omnibenevolence. Mm -hmm. And then, as he lay there three days later, Jesus emerged victorious over death from the tomb. And for the next 40 days, he taught and ministered to his disciples in what must have been an intensely yeah. powerful experience. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yes. He was preparing them mm -hmm. for his ascension into heaven. Mm -hmm. So as we go to John 20, I'll begin with that verse, John 20. It said, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. Mm -hmm. Now, all four Gospels mention women going to the tomb of Jesus. But only in Mark 16, 1 mentions that the three, that the name is Mary, that went. So Mark is the one that tells you it was Mary Magdalene was the mm -hmm. first one there. Mm -hmm. Now, Mary Magdalene, according to the Gospels, Jesus cleansed her of seven demons. Mm -hmm. Seven demons. And then she went on to be one of his backers. Yes. She financially aided him in his needs. Of the women that said the women that ministered to Jesus' needs, she was one of those women that followed him around and helped pay for the things for the ministry, you know? Amen. And she was the witness of the crucifixion. And then she was the first person to see him after the resurrection. Yeah. Now, it was preached many years ago by a pope in the third or fourth century that claimed that Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. Nowhere in scripture does it say that she was a prostitute. Mm -hmm. Right. But he preached a good sermon and it kind of caught on. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> but had it not, she said she was had seven demons in her that Jesus yeah. cast out. Mm -hmm. Now, I've met people over the years and wondered how many demons they had in them, but oh. seven <laughs> demons. <laughs> seven is the number of completion. <laughs> you know, so you completely <laughs> demon-possessed <laughs> with seven of them. So, wow. That's why she loved the Lord so much. The yes. more you've been delivered from, yes. the more you love yes. God. Oh, yes. 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 Then we talk about the other Mary, the Mary of Mary of Cleophas. Mm -hmm. Now, this Mary is believed to be the half-sister or sister of Mary, Jesus' mother. Mm -hmm. So this would have been Jesus' aunt mm -hmm. that was there. So she stuck by, and she was at the cross, and she was at the everything, and she was one of the first ones to go back and see. Mm -hmm. And then you have Mary of Salome, mm -hmm. which is the wife of Zebedee, the mother of James and John. Mm -hmm. It said she was counted as the three Marys. Mm -hmm. So when you get to talking about these Marys, it can get confusing. Mary is a very common name, you know, like I remember like, you know, Juan or John. That's <laughs> one of those names that you could pretty well guess somebody in the room is named John. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that, Juan, depending on the group of people. So these are common names that you see them in scripture and people get confused and then people want to argue about the differences in the gospel. But you got to realize that God allowed each person to write as the Spirit brought to their remembrance. Amen. The facts are the same, even though some say it was two angels at the tomb. Some say it was one angel at the tomb. Why, does, why do the scriptures, you know, one angel rolled away and sat on the stone? You know, each person remembers what was magnified in their spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, but they don't dispute there was an angel there. There was a stone rolled away, yeah. and, you know, and his body wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So regardless, you know, of how you interpret it and how you see it, the facts don't change. Mm -hmm. Wow. But then she wanted to know, where did they lay him? Mm -hmm. where, she wanted to know, we know where we put him, but where is he at now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Matthew 28 says that Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. Luke 24 speaks of Mary Magdalene and Joanna and the Mary of Jacob. And it adds the other woman. <laughs> so they just said the other woman. The Bible didn't have a lot of emphasis on females. Mm -hmm. And it said the woman who came out with him from Galilee and saw the tomb where his body was laid. Yeah. So as we discuss these things, they saw where he was laid, but as they came and the tomb was empty, they're like, where is he? Mm -hmm. And it's funny how some, you know, Jesus told them many times repeatedly that he would die that he would be resurrected mm -hmm. and all this thing. And he said, you know, he told him he's going to the cross. Mm -hmm. And then it's like they're all amazed mm -hmm. that he was executed and he died. Mm -hmm. And then when they got there, his body wasn't there. Mm -hmm. But he told them over and over again mm -hmm. these things were going to happen. But sometimes when people tell you something, it doesn't register right. until it comes to pass. Yes, yes, yes. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. Mm -hmm. And said they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Mm -hmm. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Mm -hmm. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. Mm -hmm. John was younger than Peter. <laughs> so John got to the tomb first. This is a disciple Jesus loved. and talked about him at the Last Supper, leaning on Jesus. Mm -hmm. As he was talking to the disciples, he loved Jesus so much they were very close. Even at the cross when he was crucified, he told this disciple, take care of my mother. Because mm -hmm. you will have the right. He bypassed his other siblings and told him, as the eldest and the oldest son, I have the right. And you take care of my mother. Mm -hmm. That was nothing against his brothers, but that was just saying that he wanted somebody he knew yeah. that would give up his life for his mother. Somebody he knew that would treat her like their very own mother. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the honor that John had. And then they said they were both running, but the other disciple reached the tomb first. <laughs> so John got there at the tomb and paused. There are so many that pause before they come to Jesus. Yeah. Mm, yeah. They won't they don't want to rush into this faith thing. Some want to just survey the faith. They won't take time and see if this is for me or if this is not for me. And some don't want to fully commit. Because they're afraid of what they might lose. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as I taught you before, when they said how they used to catch monkeys in the jungle, is they would take a banana and put it in a knot of a tree. And then the monkey 
would be a tree full of bananas, but he saw you put that uh, banana in that knot hole. So the monkey would go in there and try to pull it out the hole, but it was sideways when he tried to pull it out. So the monkey steady trying to pull this one banana out, and they come up, put a sack over him, and catch it. If he'd have turned the banana sideways, <laughs> he could have took it out. Yeah. But out of all the bananas he had, he still wanted to have that. What's so special about this one that you hired it in the tree? <laughs> and that's the way sometimes people treat the gospel. You know, they don't, are you sure you got the right one? Now, I don't know if I want to commit to this one until I know. And then some people get into black pride and all this, and they want to make Jesus black. And they want to say all the disciples were black. I'm not here to argue whether they were black or not. You know, that doesn't matter. To me, the color on the outside never matters. Because when you get to heaven, we all are spirit beings. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll be known in heaven as we're known on earth. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. You won't be white in heaven if you was black here. <laughs> but what I'm just saying, but when you get to heaven, you'll be known by your spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Not the divisions that happen to us at the Tower of Babel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, when he split everybody up. Mm -hmm. And then people want to argue, you know, well... Where was the Garden of Eden at? It's been pretty well proven that it was in Africa, close to Egypt. It's where most scholars believe it was anyway. Then folks want to argue, well, that proves they were black. That has nothing to do with it. Don't focus on the outside. Focus right. on the spirit yeah. person. Amen. Amen. So, man, and then it said, these people that just want to survey the faith, though. Mm -hmm. I have such a good time with people like that. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they just want to try to trick me, mm -hmm. trap me. And then people, those that were so religious, that have all the rules, but they read only the King James Bible. <laughs> Why just the King James? You know, as I told you, when I was a kid, I remember watching Batman in black and white. Then color TV came out about 65, 67, and I got to see Batman in color. And I never wanted to watch Batman in black and white again. But you know, that's the difference between the King James and the modern translations. You could watch it in black and white and get the same information. But when I saw the black beauty was black, I saw that his suit was actually gray and black. I saw Robin had on red and green, all these things I couldn't see in black and white. In our generation, we were good enough to tell in black and white different shades of black and white. <laughs> oh, see, that's got to be green because it's a darker black. It's a lighter black. <laughs> you know, I mean, when you're an expert in black and white TV, <laughs> you, you can actually see. You know, we, we have become proficient in black and white TV. But it's like that. Once God illuminates something, once God shows you yeah, that yeah. it's a better way to learn it. Amen. When I sit there trying to figure out what a kind is and all that, it, it, you know, just tell me it's a cow. Don't get caught up in this side issue. So they paused there, and he, you know, John didn't have the faith to go in. John didn't have the, the, the boldness to go in. Maybe John didn't want to go in because he was afraid that everything he believed was wrong. Mm. Maybe he was afraid to go in and find out that this really didn't happen. Maybe he's afraid to go in and find out Jesus was still dead. Or, what was he, or maybe the Romans are trying to set him up, and they, they were hiding in the tomb yeah. and waiting for him to come in mm -hmm. so they could put him to death, you know. There was a hesitation there. Mm -hmm. But Peter always being bold and don't care. Peter just rushed right in. Yeah. 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 Peter bust on in the tomb. Like Peter ready to cut off somebody's ear. Peter ready to find out yeah. What's, yeah. Where, where is my Lord at? Where is my yeah. Savior at? Yeah. What's going on here? Yeah. Yeah. Peter wanted answers. Amen. Wow. So in verse 7, as well as it says that uh, Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb and saw the strips of linen lying there, mm -hmm. as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. Mm -hmm. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Mm -hmm. uh, then finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. Amen. Sometimes God has proved things to you. Yes. There's a lot, you know, we used to have a saying when I was young, you know, fat meets greasy. Yeah. <laughs> People don't believe it till they see it. Right. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Bump your head and you'll find out. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, the old folks used to let you do stuff. Uh -huh. <laughs> you, you don't want to listen to them, keep on playing in the street. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. get hit by a car, they think, now what they tell you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they won't try to all my baby and all that. <laughs> they like, get up and brush yourself back off <laughs> and stay right. in the street. Right. And that's the kind of way it is sometimes with the, with the word. Sometimes God has to let you just bump your head before you realize what he's been yeah. telling you all the time. Amen. But see, Peter had to rush to see what was going on. And maybe because he felt that he was a failure because he didn't defend Jesus when he swore he would. And maybe because of all the persecution that Jesus went through, 
he never said a word. He even denied him. So maybe Peter wanted to go in there to maybe apologize or maybe see or whatever. Mm -hmm. We don't know why he yeah. rushed in or just to find out what's going on. Yeah. And said the cloth had been wrapped around his head was still lying in his place separate from the linen. Now the cloth, you know, he went through the material. Mm -hmm. His body went through it. Yes. So it was like a, a cocoon. Mm -hmm. It was then still in the shape of his body. Mm -hmm. But the cloth that kept the jaw from slipping mm -hmm. was folded in the Jewish tradition. Yeah and sat at the head. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that shows you that he wasn't in a hurry when he got up. Mm -hmm. All right. He took time to fold the cloth. Yeah. He wasn't worried about them coming to find him. He wasn't trying to sneak out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes. you know what yes. I mean? So that just, that's why these things are pointed out. Mm -hmm. It said, when he went in, he, in verse 8, he, uh, John went in and he believed. Mm -hmm. But they still didn't understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Mm-hmm. See, we can look back all these generations later and understand the resurrection yes. because of the history we have been taught and the things we understand. Mm -hmm. But if you were living live in that day mm -hmm. and he got up and resurrected and stuff, you know, that's still something you got to process. Mm -hmm. Just as when, when Peter was captured and they were praying for Peter mm -hmm. and Peter was knocking on the door trying to yeah. get in. Yes. And they like, be quiet. We in here praying for Peter. We trying to, you know, we try to get him out of jail. Peter knocking again and again. Like, who is this at the door? And they opened the door and it was Peter. Mm -hmm. Sometimes while you praying it, God is already working it out. Yes. Yes. Amen. <laughs> then the disciples went back to where they were staying. So after all this, they, they went back. <laughs> then Jer Jesus appeared to Mary outside the tomb she was crying and she wept and she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been and one at the head the other at the foot they asked her woman why are you crying they've taken my lord away she said I don't know where they have put him at this she turned and saw Jesus standing there but she didn't realize that it was Jesus and he asked her woman why are you crying who is it you are looking for? Thinking it was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Amen. Yes. So Mary, somebody, if y'all have moved his body, mm -hmm. this woman said, I'll pick him up and bring him back to where he's supposed to be. She didn't, she didn't know how she was going to lift him, how she was going to carry him, but she would say, let me know where my Lord is. He's supposed to be in this tomb. Yes. yes. He's supposed to be here in this yes. sacred place. Yes. So if you're taking him away, tell me where you're taking him at. I'll go get him, and I'll bring him back here among the dead. Yes. And Jesus said to her, Mary, and she turned around. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Robona, mm -hmm. which means teacher. He called her name in such a manner, even though she was crying and weeping yes. and confused. Yes. But when Jesus called her name, yeah. Hallelujah. The Bible says the Lord has a name for all of us. Yes. And he will call yes. us that name yes. that only he knows. Mm -hmm. So the name your parents give you may not be the name that God gave you. Yes. Amen. And God has created enough to give each one of us our own no name. name. Yes. You might go in a place full of Jeffreys and Rachels and Benjamins and all that. But guess what? There's only one name God has for you. Mm -hmm. And he said he will call you by that yes. name. And when he said Mary. She just had to say, teacher. Yes, yes. It's him. Mm -hmm. She recognized yes. it. And Jesus told her, don't hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I'm ascending to my Father and your Father, Amen. to my God and your God. Amen. This was the transfiguration from disciple to apostle. Yes. And this was transforming them from being followers to being brothers and sisters. Amen. See, see, there's that period when you come into the faith that you're a follower. Yeah. Yeah. But then after you've matured in Christ, then you become a brother and yeah, sister yeah. in Christ. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I said don't be too soon to try to preach. Don't be too soon to try to teach because you're still at that disciple stage. You're yeah. still learning for yourself. But once you come to that next level yeah. where you are a brother and sister of Christ, then you've been elevated to that sacred station for a reason. Amen. He said, I'm going to my father mm -hmm. and your father. Before then, he prayed, Heavenly Father. Right. And he prayed, My Father. Mm -hmm. But now he's praying, Our oh, Father. Wow. Our yeah. Father which are in heaven. Yeah, yeah. When he taught him how to pray, he told him, Pray in this yeah. manner. Our Father. Amen. Not my Father in heaven. Yeah. He said, 
our Amen. Father. See, see, you gotta realize the change, mm -hmm. the change that Christ has here and there, and the change yeah. in the dialogue, and these things are changed for a reason. Yeah. Jesus never said anything without a purpose. Mm -hmm. yeah. He never did anything without a purpose. Everything he did was to illustrate and to show yeah. his power and his kingdom and, and the Father's kingdom. Amen. Yes. So Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. Mm -hmm. I've seen the Lord. Well. And she told them that he had said these things to her. So now Mary went to another gospel writer and says, you know, these women running around here talking about they done seen Jesus, you know, the two brothers on the road to Emmaus. <laughs> and so a lot of crazy stuff happening now since Jesus died. <laughs> we had some of the women claim they saw him and all this, and I don't know what's going on. He's dead, now he ain't dead. His body was there, now his body's not there. And he's like, there's Jesus, you must be a stranger. Yeah. You don't know all these things been happening all this time. You must be a stranger around here. There's a lot of spiritual things been happening. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, tell me about these things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, what are the facts that you perceive them? What are the facts that you perceive them? What are the facts that you know? Yeah. And Jesus yeah. let them explain to him about what's been going on. Yeah. Yeah. But it said, then as they walked, he got to explain in the scriptures to them. Yeah. He got to explain it to them that these things had to happen. Yeah. These yeah. things were foretold by the prophets yeah. before they happened. Amen. These things happened just so it would be a witness for you before. When Isaiah said a virgin would be born. Yeah. And unto mm -hmm. us, the kingdom would be on his shoulders. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So he said, these things are already written. Yes. Amen. So, wow. <laughs> and then Mary Magdalene was trying to explain this stuff to the men. Mm -hmm. And at that time, they didn't take a woman's word for nothing. I can remember as a child when they still enforced that if a wife went and took out credit and didn't ask the husband, mm -hmm. the store could cancel that credit card. Yeah. That was just in the 60s. Yeah. That still happened. Yeah. Wow. That you couldn't go yeah. get a credit card without your husband's permission. Yeah. 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 So, you know, this is the same thinking. If you back up all these other generations, we can't take no woman's word. But is, is there a man that can testify for you? Mm -hmm. Wow. So... <laughs> Then Jesus appeared to his disciples. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, the doors were locked for fear of the Jewish leaders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Sometimes Jesus will meet you when you're locked up and held yeah. up. <laughs> Jesus will meet you when you're held up. You know, there's so many brothers I've talked to that when they're in jail, they get saved. Mm -hmm. When they in jail, they, I got my walk back together. When they when they at the mission or they're somewhere where they went to the bottom and they got to try to come back up, now all of a sudden they see Jesus. Yeah. And they on fire for Jesus. They want to preach for Jesus. And they get out that first night and they give them everything they want to drink, everything they want to smoke. They provide whoever they want to freak with and all that. And the next thing you know, Jesus is forgotten. <laughs> I've seen so many of them do that. They tell me why they locked up. I, I got my life together. I'm coming back. I know what my Savior is. Yep. Then they get sick. All of a sudden, they forget about Jesus. Mm -hmm. People are on fire, and they come to church regularly, but if they have an illness, yeah. then they turn their back on Jesus. They have a divorce, they turn their back on Jesus. They lose a loved one, they turn their back on yeah. Jesus. They lose a job, they turn their back on Jesus. There's so many that turn away because of the circumstances of life. Yeah, yeah. So they got Jesus on a rental program. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they used to have a thing in Texas with the car dealers they call a tote the note dealer. Yeah, yeah. That you pay there, you drive there. But if you didn't pay, they come back at the car. <laughs> you know? And they got Jesus on that tote the note plan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll pay you week to week to be in my life, Jesus. But he said, peace be with you. Wow. And after he said this, he showed them his hands at his side. The disciples were over jail, overjoyed when they saw the Lord. All right. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Uh -oh. And with that, yes. he breathed on them. Yes. Said, receive the Holy Spirit. Woo. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. This is when the power came in. Yes. Now, when they were in the room and asked, and they spout, the power came in to all the others. Mm -hmm. But this was when the power came to the disciples. Yeah. This is when the power came to his brothers. Yeah. So this yeah. was the, when they received the Holy yeah. Ghost. Before and this enabled them to go and have that other thing yeah. that happened yeah. in Acts. Yeah. Before yeah. they had the power to preach in Acts, they had received the Holy yeah. Ghost yeah. in John. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. When the power came then, yeah. mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Now, when they all, all gathered in the room and they all spoke in another tongue, that was after this. Right. Mm -hmm. That was after God had given you yeah. the power. All right. Yes, yes, yes. You can't do God's work without yeah, the power. Yes. Well, you can't yeah. do God's work. You can have a head knowledge. You can have, but if you don't have a heart knowledge, yeah. Yeah. if you don't really believe this thing, yeah. mm -hmm. then you can't receive the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Then other people want to do things and tell the Holy Spirit to look the other way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know I love you. You know what I'm saying? But right now, I got to deal with some fleshly stuff. <laughs> now, Lord, you know I got to get out there and get this gas money. So, you know, forgive me for using this stolen credit card. <laughs> forgive me for using it. Lord, you know it's rough out here. I found this purse full of money. Lord, it, it, it was a ghetto blessing. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, know, right you know, we want to try to work things out to ask God to give us a break. <laughs> mm-hmm. To receive you the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. If you forgive anyone's sin, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Wow. Okay, now we get back to forgive everybody for everything. People always want to throw John 7 on you. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. I can live like hell because you can't judge me. I can do everything I want to do. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. That's not a get out of jail free car. Well, come on, <laughs> you know. come on, it said, by the same matter you judge, it will be judged on you. you. Yeah. I may not be doing your sin, mm -hmm. but if your sin is a written sin, well, I can tell you what the word of God says. Now, what you do with that information is up to you. Amen. Amen. People always want to tell me that so-and-so is doing this, and so I don't care. <laughs> Let me frack you. As your pastor, your bishop, <laughs> number two in charge of my denomination, <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. I don't care. <laughs> what you do is between you and the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes, right. I'm trying to keep me straight. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Right, right. As far as what I'm responsible for right. is me. Mm -hmm. Now, if the Holy Spirit can't convince you, what chance do I have? That's right. If the Holy Spirit can't make you stop, how can I make you stop? If the Holy Spirit can't make you feel guilty, how can I make you feel guilty? It's not my responsibility to ride herd on you. Right. Be free as you want to. Right. But if you forgive their sins, they're forgiven. So if they're willing to renounce those sins, yeah. if they're willing to repent from those sins, yeah. Yeah. then those sins will be forgiven. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if they're not willing, uh -huh. tell them keep their sins and keep on stepping. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so that's what he's telling you. Yeah. If you want to be in sin, be in sin. Then he, he had to, after he did this, and then it says, Jesus appeared to Thomas. Verse 24. Now, Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. Uh -huh. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I would not believe. Yeah. Oh, Old doubting Thomas. Yeah. Yeah. He's Thomas Didymus. People think Didymus means doubting. No, Didymus is Thomas, the twin. twin. So he's telling the, the twin is telling him. Mm -hmm. Unless I see for my, how many people tell you they got to see for themselves? Yeah. yeah. How many people yeah. tell you they got to know for themselves? Yeah. They, right. they won't believe what other people say. They won't believe what the scripture said. Amen. I got to see for myself. We got to quit worrying about being an eyewitness and realize what God is telling us. Mm -hmm. But he said he won't believe. So a week later, the disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Uh -huh. Dude, the doors were locked. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. <laughs> so Jesus never worried about locks and doors. <laughs> you know? Right. And it was funny. They in a secret hiding place. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The, 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 don't miss that. They are in a secret hiding place. Uh -huh. God will meet you in your secret hiding place. God will meet you in your secret yes. hiding, hiding place. place. Yes. That place you tell God don't look. That place you said that drawer you got stuff in you don't want God to see. That closet in the back where you don't want the Lord to see. That's why you used to always tell people, keep all your little hidden stuff. Keep all that stuff clean because you may drop dead and your kids yep. going to be surprised with all you've been holding on to. <laughs> you got a little porno films of you, you better get rid of that stuff. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want your memory. 
They see things what mama done wrote and mama done said, Lord, Lord, their whole memory be changed forever. That's what I'm just saying. And that's why I tell people, they don't realize your kids got all day to go through every part of your house. And when summer's out, they go through every inch of your house. I got good at cracking safes. Because, you know, I've learned that you can listen for the tumble and you hold the safe to your ear. You know, watch it on the move. <laughs> you know, I was eight, nine years old. I was cracking safes, you know, to see what they had in those little boxes. I'm just saying. So anything you don't want to be a part of your legacy, I suggest you get rid of it. <laughs> no. That's all I'm saying. Open up that door. <laughs> because Jesus is able to come in to you seek his face. You mess around and have a stroke, they willing you out, and the kids got to go through to get you some clothes to bring to the hospital. And they done found all your toys and stuff that you own. Oh, Lord, get your house clean. Now, somebody need to hear that. I don't know. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Yeah, yeah. Stop doubting and believe. Amen. Simple. Because so many times we want to doubt God. Yes. If the Lord loves me, why am I going through? If the Lord loves me, why am I sick? If the Lord loves me, why do I keep battling the same illness? The thing is, we all in sin, curse, flesh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Each and every one of us will yeah. probably die from our last illness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. Or you may go before illness. You might go in a traffic accident. It's not determined how you will go. Only God knows that. Yes. But the thing about it, you are in sin, curse, flesh. Amen. That is wearing away and getting older every day. Yes. I like to look at these commercials with Marie Osmond. We're about the same age. Mm -hmm. Marie Osmond's face is so tight. And her eyes are so tight. And I just want to go up there and thump it and see if they see it. See if all this stuff pop. <laughs> you know? This woman is 67 years old, 68 years old, and she try to look like she's 20 something. Come on, man. Who are you fooling? Wow. God gonna reveal all that. Can't even smile no more. Your face is froze. <laughs> he said, my, then Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Yeah. Once God removes the doubts in your life, yeah. once God removes the reasons and the excuses on, yeah. why didn't you can't come to him, yeah. once God will take that out of your life, yeah. you will be able to say, my Lord yeah. and my God. Yeah. 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 Then Jesus told him, because you've seen me, you believe. Right. Blessed are those who have not seen me on, yet now. and believe. Yeah. He's talking about us today. Yeah. Yeah. We have not personally seen Jesus, yeah. no. but we believe. Yes. Yeah. We personally weren't there to put our fingers in his side, but we believe. He said we are blessed. When he prayed that priestly yes. prayer in John 17, yes. he said, I'm not only praying for these, but I'm praying for those to come. Ooh. That was me. Yes. Yes. That was me. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Who believed because of the testimony. Yes. Uh -huh. Not the ones that saw it, but I believe the testimony. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, God, he, he allowed Thomas to have doubts, uh -huh. but he didn't rush to prove himself to him. Right. He took a week to show up. Mm -hmm. Thomas talking smack to all the disciples yeah. and stuff. Like, Y'all saw the yeah, right. Yeah. You know, so he gave him a whole week to work it out. Mm -hmm. He gave him a week to process mm -hmm. these things that were too overwhelming for his mind. Yeah. Sometimes God gives you time Come to on. process yes. what you're yes. going through. Mm -hmm. yes. God gives you time to process that. God doesn't have to have an answer from you today. Uh -huh. He'll let you process it uh -huh. till you get to where he's at. But one thing, God is immovable. He going to be where he always was. People say, I found Jesus. Jesus never was lost. I found God. God wasn't lost. He wasn't on the milk carton. None of that. He, he right where he should be. Right. And then he breaks down the purpose of John's gospel. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in his book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Amen. Life in his name. No other name in heaven and earth can you be saved. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father except, except through me. Amen. So you can try to get around and come to all these other things. You know, I've been dealing with pastors that are afraid to go places where people don't recognize Jesus. Afraid to be caught with them. My God can go anywhere I go. Yeah. 
My God is not afraid to be in a Buddhist temple. My God is not afraid to be in a Muslim temple. He's not afraid. Because where I go, I take God with me. He's in this temple. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to shake my belief. Yes, yes. And I'm willing to wait till we get to the end and see the answer. Right. Uh -huh. I'm willing. Mm -hmm. Like I said, man, I done gave up a lot of good years of partying. <laughs> and Paul said, we are more lost than everybody else. Because all the people that kept partying and sinning, they knew they had the right answer. Right. But we believed in God, and we gave up everything, so we missed a lot of good partying. Mm -hmm. So Paul said, I got to believe. I, I've invested too much yes. not to believe. Yes, yes, yes. I done put in some time with this thing. Right. <laughs> I look back, it was 1992 mm -hmm. when I got saved. Yeah. It was funny, when I got saved, my brother Reuben got married that, uh, that Christmas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they gave everybody at the wedding a bottle of wine. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, I can't even drink this wine. He hey. said, Reuben and Rose on the bottle. Right. <laughs> I had to pass it on to another alcohol. Right. <laughs> but I'm just saying, but that's why Reuben's always amazed that I know his anniversary, how long you been married. Yeah, that's the year I got right. saved. Right. And I can tell you the week I got saved. <laughs> yeah. It was April 26th. It was the week they hit that deep tunnel in Chicago. Yeah. And the flood in Chicago and all that stuff was flooded underground and everything. And I was on vacation. And I was getting ready to go to Peoria to the new riverboat. Right. And me and Janice had plans. We're going to go down to the riverboat and have a good time. <laughs> Mess them around and went to see my kids perform at an Easter play. And God said. <laughs> I had plenty. <laughs> on Easter of 1992, I was headed to the brand new riverboat. And we, we planned, we was going to hit the hotel, we was going to gamble, drink, and have a good time. All of a sudden, and Jesus met you there. <laughs> Man, I went to see my kids in the play and got saved. <laughs> so I'm just saying, that's the only thing. Pastor Davis told me, you done tried everything else. Why don't you try Jesus? All right, now. And having been one that had tried everything I could think of, I thought, why not try Jesus? Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's it. And then he was talking about God is cleaning up a drinking problem. God is cleaning up this problem and that problem. I'm looking at my brother Giz. He need all that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought for sure he's talking about Giz. That's <laughs> the like, problem and all that. I'm just sitting there just all yeah. Yeah. man. Yeah. The Holy Ghost hit me like, he talking to you. <laughs> it ain't Gia's fault this time. He talking to you. So I'm just saying. Wow. And from 1992 to now, I am no way to I'm yet holding on. I'm yet holding on. There, I have nephews and nieces that never heard me curse. Then those that were before Jesus can tell you the story. <laughs> My daughters used to like to play the VHS tape from me cussing out everybody. <laughs> oh, this is what the preacher used to like. <laughs> you know. So I'm just saying, until God came in my life, I tell people if it happened before 92, I probably did do it. <laughs> but after 1992, mm -hmm. that sin and me are through. <laughs> I'm just saying. Amen. My first point, never doubt the importance of the resurrection. Amen. Your Amen. eternity depends on it. Amen. Don't doubt the resurrection. People won't tell you how can this, how can snakes talk, how can donkeys talk, how can people walk on water, I don't understand, but I do believe that God is all powerful. If he said he did it, he did it, and I believe it. Amen. I'm not educated enough not to believe it. <laughs> Sometimes he told Paul, your much learning that made you mad. Right. You don't learn so much, you become stupid. Yeah. So I'm just saying. Well, well, <laughs> My second point, we will all rise after death Amen. if we don't rip, witness the rapture before. Mm -hmm. So we all going to get up. Yep. But if we hear when he come back during the rapture, guess what? We won't see death. Mm -hmm. That's an awesome thought. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, as I look back at all the people I've known over the years and all my siblings that have went on before me, mm -hmm. but he said on that day, he will rise up mm -hmm. and we will come back together mm -hmm. to meet each other in the air. Yes. Wow. That's that's awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. We haven't lost any. Yeah. My last point. These things are written that you may believe. Amen. 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 There is a record that cannot be disputed. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember they, the, the old folks used to get mad at Muhammad Ali for always talking about what round he gonna knock somebody out of here? What round the fight's gonna be over? They say, he full of pride. He gonna get her. Cassius Clay gonna get knocked out. He used to be going on and on. His name is Cassius Clay, and I used to listen to him talk about Ali. 
And then when he was fighting Joe Frazier, Joe Frazier kept calling him Cassius Clay. Mm -hmm. Then Ali got mad. They popped him and he said, what's my name? And Joe said, Cassius Clay. Right. Popped him again, what's my name? Popped him. He was, he was wearing Joe. Every time Joe called him Cassius, he wore him out. When Joe was down on his knees, about ready to be knocked out, he still wanted to say Cassius Clay. Right. <laughs> you know? But Ali learned him his name that day. Right. <laughs> you know? And that's the thing about it. These things are written. Yeah. And then Ali said, he ain't bragging. When you can do what you say you're going to do, right. it's prophecy. It. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it wasn't bragging. Right. It's prophecy. prophecy. And so I say I'm going to knock you out in the third round, right. that's prophecy. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and, and he did it. I see it time. I see so many people lose money on Ali in the 70s, mm -hmm. betting against him. I see my dad lose two weeks' pay betting on Joe Frazier. He bet on Joe Frazier, and Ali took his check. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm just saying? That man had to struggle for two weeks <laughs> because he didn't believe. But he said, these things are written that you may believe. Sometimes you got to make people believe. So my message this morning is, do you know Christ? And do you believe? And you know where you're going on that day. Yes. Well, let us celebrate this Resurrection Sunday because yes. he's alive and I know it. Yes. Got about the grave. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Well, Lord, I thank you for this day and I thank you for being with us and keeping us. And I thank you for your faithfulness in all things, Lord. And I thank you that you have brought us here for such a time as this. We continue to pray for you. You just to open the eyes of those that see and see the importance of the resurrection. Yeah, see the importance of knowing you. And see that all these man-made things have nothing to do with knowing you. Amen. And Lord, we pray that everyone would be saved. Paul said, I pray everyone would be like me except for these chains. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we yeah. pray that everyone come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Yes. And these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Remember, keep on living and leaving the legacy. Yes. And A, admit you a sinner. B, believe he died for your sins. And C, confess him as Lord and Savior. Yes. And you shall, shall be, be saved. saved. Amen. Yeah. Amen.